Well, good, good morning, everybody. Good to see you in God's house today. Let's all grab a songbook, stand to your feet, turn to page number 314. Let's sing, I have found the way. Page 314. Sing it out this morning. Here we go now. I have found the way that leads to endless day. Yonder in the glory land. And the road is bright, for Jesus is the light. And behold, my trembling hand. I found the way. I found the way. Glory, hallelujah. I found the way. I will never fear while Jesus is so near. pages of 317. Let's sing His Love Lights the Way for Me. Page 317. Y'all singing good this morning now. Here we go. I've left the old paths I traveled so long. I'm happy redeemed and free of Jesus the Lord. I sing a sweet song. His love lights the way for me.
Amen. You can be seated. Worship with the choir while they sing this morning. Page number 19. One day is victory. The next day I'm living with pain. One minute the sun is shining down. Then it starts to rain. But I know a touch from God will quiet the thunder. I'll never get over the blood that I'm under.
well as the choir's coming down. Let's all stand together. Turn to page number 135. Sing, I'll be satisfied. 135, y'all sing it out this morning. I'll be satisfied. Oh, when my soul is singing in the promised land above, I'll be satisfied. Praising Christ the Savior for redeeming grace and love, I'll be satisfied. soul is resting in the presence of the Lord. I'll be satisfied. Living in a city where the soul shall never die. I'll be satisfied. Y'all sing it now. There to meet with loved ones nevermore to say goodbye. I'll be satisfied. soul is resting in the presence of the Lord. I'll be satisfied. Sing that chorus again now. I'll be satisfied. I'll be satisfied. Oh, and my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord. I'll be satisfied. Thank you for that. Isn't that good choir singing this morning? I'm so glad. Hallelujah. You can be satisfied in this life and satisfied in the next life if you know Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me just make a mention of a thing or two. Brother Danny's going to sing for us this morning, so you worship with him as he gets ready to sing. I do want to remind you that our Christmas parade will be coming up December the 9th, and we're receiving candy. Anyone that would like to bring in some bags of candy, uh, we'll be putting that with gospel tracks and passing out uh, tracks or invitations, I think, will be to the uh, to our Christmas plays, what that'll be. So uh, any candy you bring in, we will much appreciate that. And then also, uh, I want to thank the Lord. We got this concrete poured back in the back so we can get this drainage. Uh, uh, we got it completed. I know if nobody else in this room is happy, I know that Brother Dave Terry and Brother Logan is happy. Amen. And so we thank the Lord. Isn't that, doesn't that look good back there? Now, some of you had not seen it because we've had it blocked off. But when you come by, here's what you're going to say. You're going to see it and say, man, don't that look good. Amen. And so we're going to put a nice fence up behind there. I uh, want to do that. Our neighbors have worked so well with us. And so we, we told them we'd put a nice white vinyl fence up. That would look nice. And so a lot of progress we're going to keep making. Uh, Lord willing, right on into 2023 if Jesus hadn't come. And if he comes before 2023, you know what? The world, the flesh, and the devil, they can have every bit of this. Amen. Because we're going to a place that's a whole lot better. And so we're looking forward to that. But I do want to thank the Lord for that, and that'll be opened up, Lord willing, next Sunday, all right? And then, of course, next Sunday will be our Christmas dinner, and the church will provide the, the meat and the drinks, and ladies, if you don't mind bringing uh, desserts and bringing uh, covered dishes, vegetables, and things of that nature, if you have any questions, you can see my wife, but always a good time of fellowship, and uh, feel free to invite somebody to come and be here on next Sunday. I promise you they'll hear the gospel, and, uh, and it'll be a good opportunity to get them to come and uh, be here during these times and pray for their soul. And also want to uh, continue to ask you to pray for the Lyons family. We appreciate Brother Laddie and Miss Thelma and all them. Brother Paul Lyons went home to be with the Lord uh, this past Wednesday, and they'll be having a graveside service on Tuesday at 11 o'clock at the Tennessee, Georgia uh, Park Cemetery right here off of Hogan Road. And so if you're able to attend that, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. And if you're not able, they understand that. Brother Paul was a deacon here for 23 years. And he was a faithful servant of God, wasn't he? Amen. And uh, he was a deacon a lot, lot many more years. He served in other churches, uh, but he served here at Bible Baptist for 23 years. And I'll tell you this, never had a crossword word with him. He was always a blessing, and he always gave good, sound, solid wisdom. And don't you thank God for men like that? Yeah. And I know preachers have had bad experiences with deacons, and guess what? Deacons have had bad experiences with preachers too. But you know what? The history of this church has always had a good testimony. And uh, I thank God for uh, Brother Cape when he was here. I thank God for every deacon that has served. Many of them I never met, 
but don't you thank the Lord for men that have provided good, solid leadership down through the years. And so we're thankful for all of our deacons, but we especially want to remember Brother Paul today and remember his family in our prayers. So we're going to receive our offering this morning. You give as the Lord would have you to give. You can't outgive God, isn't that right? Uh, one preacher said his, uh, his shovel's bigger than, than your spoon. Then I heard somebody say, well, it'll be the other way around. His spoon's bigger than your shovel. But it don't matter how you say it. God's going to outgive you. Amen. And uh, so you give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer at this time. And um, John, Brother John Proctor, would you pray over the offering this morning? Amen. You can be seated. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me my soul well something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole well since I met this blessed Savior since he cleansed and made me whole well I will never cease to praise him I'll shout it while eternity rolls he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my so something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole how oh, well he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul well something wonderful happened and now i know he touched me oh he touched me yes he touched me and he made me whole amen Hallelujah. Well, if that don't stir you up, I don't know what will. Amen. Sister Whitlow, y'all come sing one for us this morning. I just want to stop and say this. I thank God for touching Brother Danny. Amen. And uh, I tell you, I missed him not uh, being able to sing for some time, but he's uh, got back to where he can, and what a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. And uh, thank God for his touch. Brother, um, your name will come to me in just a second. Brother Point Dexter, how about you stand up and give a word of testimony this morning? Just had you on my heart. Amen. That's right. Yes.
Yes. That's right. Amen. Bless you, brother. Yes. Help me. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yes. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? You know, God would have been better off without us, but we sure wouldn't have been better off without Him. And I'm thankful, amen, he loves us unconditionally. Hallelujah. You pray for them, worship with them, be seen. It matters to the master. 
Yeah. Amen. Every time you lift up Jesus, you're going to feel the presence of God. Amen. Stand with us this morning, John chapter number 10. I just appreciate, I felt God's presence from the time I've been in. We, we, we started this service this morning, and the choir began to sing, and the special singing began, or I mean, the congregation began to sing. I just felt the presence of God here this morning. Isn't it good to go to church and know God's there? Amen. And uh, I just love him this morning. I thank him for who he is this morning. Thank him for what he's done, but more so for who he is. Hallelujah. And that we know him. John chapter 10 and verse number 7 this morning. John chapter number 10 and verse number 7. The Bible says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you this morning for your presence. Lord, thank you for just passing by this morning. God, through singing, through testifying, through the offering. Lord, I pray that you'll bless the reading of thy word now. God, I ask you this morning to give us liberty and vocabulary these next few moments. May you be glorified and magnified, and we'll love you and thank you for it. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I think all the Word of God is, is wonderful and, and tremendous. And it's hard to say that one passage is, is greater than the other. It's hard to elevate one passage greater than another because all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Amen? Every verse, every, every word of the Word of God will help you. But I think sometimes we read Scriptures that seem to just get our attention and stand out a little bit more than others. And when I read these three verses that we've read this morning, I think these are three wonderful verses of Scripture as we think about the Gospel of John and as Christ uh, uh, uses those seven uh, I am's throughout the Gospel. And John recorded them as Christ said in chapter number 6 that he said, I am the bread of life. And Jesus is the bread of life. And then he said in John chapter number 8, I am the light of the world. And Jesus is... Uh, of the light of the world. He said in John chapter 6, uh, He that believeth in me, that, or he that cometh to me, will never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. Uh, and he said in John chapter 8, He that followeth after me shall never walk in darkness. Amen. I'm glad there's a promise if you come, there's a promise if you believe, and there's a promise if you'll follow. Amen. You know why? Because it's all in Him. It's all in uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we think about out this morning our text Christ uses this statement here as he says I am the door amen and I want you to see in verse number 7 we see the door of the sheep here as Christ said I am the door by me if any man or in verse number 7 verily verily I say to you I am the door of the sheep all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them and Jesus says in verse number 7 that he is the door of the sheep I would say about verse 7 that this is a true statement as Christ uses that word verily, verily which means truly, truly and you know anything that Jesus ever said and ever has said and ever will say is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth and so this is a true statement this is also the third statement of the I Am series in John's Gospel as I mentioned he said I am the bread of life I am the light of the world and now he says I am the door and so we see here in verse 7 the door of the sheep then in verse number 8 we see the dividers of the sheep Christ points them out as he says all that came before me all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them and when Jesus talks about these dividers of the sheep he mentions their time he said all that ever came before me now he's not talking about the prophets amen he's not talking talking about the word of God he's not talking about those that preach the word of God but he's talking about the Pharisees and he's talking about the Sadducees he's talking about organized religion man made traditions that are not in the word of God he said all that ever came before me he defines the time and then he defines their title he calls them thieves and he calls them robbers amen you know sometimes when a preacher preaches people say well you'll not say things like that or y'all not call people that I'll tell you they'd have a hard time swallowing what Jesus preached amen he called them thieves and robbers you know why because they took away from the word of God they took away from the truth Jesus preached the truth and anyone that doesn't preach the truth Christ said they're a thief and they're a robber why because they divide the sheep amen there's the door of the sheep in verse 7 but there's the dividers of the sheep in verse 8 and that's the thieves and the robbers and he defines their tragedy what is their tragedy the tragedy is uh, the sheep did not hear them I'm telling you listen those that know the truth uh, and those that believe the truth uh, and 
and those that walk in the truth, uh, uh, thank God they'll not be deceived uh, by those that don't preach the truth. Amen. You see, I don't got to study Mormonism. I don't need to study the Jehovah's uh, false witness. Uh, I don't need to study uh, uh, Catholicism this morning. All I need to do is receive the truth uh, and study the truth uh, and thank God Jesus said, and you shall know the truth uh, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, I'm telling you, the more truth you know, uh, the more freer you're going to live. Amen. Uh, don't get off and study a bunch of thieves and robbers. Uh, uh, listen, a man writes a book or he, uh, he endorses a Bible and it's not the King James. Uh, I'm not buying it and not putting it on my shelf. Uh, I'm not, listen, I'm not keeping heresy in the house. Somebody say it, man. I, I'm telling you, friend, I'm just going to stick with what I know is right uh, and stick with what I know is true uh, because you can live in freedom if you do. Amen. And so there's the door of the sheep. There's the dividers of the sheep. But when we get to verse 9, our text this morning, uh, I want you to see the door of salvation this morning because Jesus makes this statement a second time in verse number 7 or verse number uh, uh, verse number 11 he, or verse number 9. I'll get it here in a second. He said, I am the door. Amen. He said it in verse number 7. He said, I'm the door of the sheep. And then in verse number 9, he says, I am the door. Uh, Jesus is making this statement a second time. And he's jo- not just talking about sheep, but thank God he's talking about salvation. Amen. When you look at that little phrase, uh, I am the door by me if any man enter in. Uh, notice that little phrase this morning because it doesn't have just to do with sheep, but it has to do with salvation. Can I get a witness on that? You say, what do you mean? Well, I see the Lord of salvation. As Christ said, I am the door. I'm telling you this morning, if you're going to get saved, uh, you're going to have to go through Jesus Christ. You know why? Uh, because he's a doorway into life. Uh, he's a doorway into heaven. Uh, he's a doorway of salvation. I'm talking about the Lord of salvation. It's not in a plan. It's in a person. Amen. It's not in a new leaf. It's in a new life. Amen. I'm telling you that life is in Christ. Uh, he is uh, uh, the Lord of salvation. And then I see the limit of salvation here. You say, what do you mean? He said, I am the door. Notice that in the next two words, uh, he said, by me. Amen. You say, is salvation limited? It is if you don't go through the door. And you don't go through the right door this morning. If you go through the door of salvation, you'll not be saved. If you go through the door of, of uh, I mean the door of religion, you'll not be saved. If you go through the door of works, you'll not be saved. If you go through the, the door of good deeds, you'll not be saved. But if you go through the door of salvation, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, then you will be saved. Acts 4 and verse 12 said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Uh, hey, Christ is the door. Uh, he's the Lord of salvation. And the only way a man can limit himself Self, uh, is by rejecting Jesus Christ uh, as his personal Lord and Savior. And so we see the limit of salvation. We see the largeness of salvation. Look what he said. He said, I am the door by me. Notice this next phrase. If any man. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, Calvinists don't like that this morning, do they? You know who salvation is for? Right there it is. Any man. And the condition is not laid upon God's shoulders. It's laid upon man's shoulders. It's not God that's doing the choosing. It's man that's doing the choosing. God gave man a free will. And God has a free will. And God's will is, uh, is 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 4. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, uh, the Father gave His Son and the Son gave His life. Uh, and Jesus Christ is the door. And the largeness of salvation is that, my friend, it's not limited uh, to just a certain nationality. It's not limited to just a certain generation or a certain race. I would tell you this morning the largest of salvation is if any man wants to be saved, he can be saved. If you're here this morning and you're lost without God and you know that you need a Savior and you realize you can't save yourself and you believe Jesus died for you and that he rose again and he wants to save you. If you'll come by way of the cross and the shed blood of Calvary, you can be saved because you're any man and God wants wants to save you this morning. He will save you. He wants to save you. He's willing to save the largeness of salvation. And then there's the lesson of salvation. 
What is the lesson of salvation? Look at it again. I am the door by me. If any man notice this, he enters in. You know what the lesson of salvation is here? Is that if you want to be saved, you can be saved. But you've got to enter in. You've got to go through the door to be saved. Sitting on a church pew, knowing that you need to be saved and wanting to be saved will not get you through the door. You know, I know where the doors are in this room. There's a door right there. And there's a door over there. And there's a door over there. And if I want to go out into the parking lot, I go through that door. If I want to go up into the Sunday school wing, I go through that door. If I need to go use the restroom, I go through that door. If I want to go out behind the church, I go through that door. I'm telling you where I'm headed to, uh, listen, has everything uh, to do with the door that I go through. Now, if I say, you know what, I I want to go to the restroom, uh, and I'm going to go through that door. Well, it's going to be a long ways around because I'm going to wind up in the wrong place. Amen? Uh, That doesn't lead to the restroom. Uh, If you say, well, I want to go to the parking lot, and I want to go out front, and where my car is parked and you go through that door it's not going to help you if you go through that door leading to the restroom it's not going to get you in the parking lot and so it is uh, uh, men have tried many different doorways uh, uh, to try to get to heaven uh, because they don't want to enter in that one door you know why because it's God's way and the Bible said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end there uh, you got to think about what's the end when you go through that door where are you going to wind up at I'm telling you friend if you're going to heaven uh, you you're going to have to go through the only door uh, that God has got. Uh, and thank God there's not ten different doors. Uh, I'm glad there is just one way uh, uh, to the pearly gate. Uh, I'm glad the way is straight and it's narrow. Uh, uh, there's just one way that leads to home. Uh, and it's through Jesus Christ our Lord this morning. That's the lesson of salvation. You want in, you got to enter in this morning. The way has been made. It's up to you. To enter in this morning. And then there's the leading of salvation. Because from the rest of this verse, Jesus is going to tell us what happens when a man enters in the door. Jesus, the door. I'm preaching on Jesus, the door to heaven. Jesus, the door to heaven. Look what happens to a man in verse number 9 when he enters into this door. I would first say this before we look at it this morning. It might even pose the question, why would you want to go through this doorway? You might be a sinner here this morning and say, why would I want to go through this doorway? I want you to think about a door for just a moment. You see, a door is of a necessity. One must uh, go through the door to enter in. And so it is with Christ. Uh, And a door is really, the property of the owner. The man who owns the house owns the door. Isn't that right? The man who owns the house, he's got the rights to the door. You see, the door is under the command of the owner. He decides when it's open. He decides when it's locked. He decides when it's unlocked. And can I tell you this morning, to go to heaven, the doorway of Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, to enter in through him, it's of great necessity this morning. And can I tell you, it is the property of his owner. Uh, my friend the Father and the Son are in perfect union uh, and thank God the way of salvation has been given and the Father has opened the doorway uh, for every sinner to enter to heaven uh, uh, but it's through His Son this morning a door is placed uh, as a legal entrance. Amen. I'm telling you I'll not be a stranger when I get to that land uh, when I get to heaven friend uh, uh, because I'm not coming on my own merit. I'm not coming on my own way uh, but I'll plead the blood. Uh, I'll plead the Son of God. Uh, I'll plead the Lord Jesus Christ and I'll have a right legally to enter in not by my righteousness but by his righteousness a door is a common passage that all can go through it it's simple it's easy to use a child can even go through a door and this morning salvation is simple A door is the place that welcomes the family, strangers, children, the needy. And so it is with salvation, the door of salvation. Jesus welcomes all this morning. A door is for the use of all, for kings, for presidents, for poor men, for beggars, for paupers. It doesn't matter who they are, where they're from. A door can be used by everyone that's willing to go through it. And salvation is for all. A door allows access to the best parts of the house. And can I tell you this morning, the best thing, 
thing that ever happened to me is when I walked through that doorway. The best thing that ever happened to you was the day that you got saved. Saved. I'm saying this morning a door divides. It secures. It opens. It gives access. And so it is with Christ. He took us out of darkness and he put us in light. He secures us in his own arms and in his own self. We're in his hands this morning. He opened a way of salvation. He made a way for you and I. And he gives us access to the throne of grace and mercy. We can come by that doorway. You say, how can you get in the throne of God? Because of being through the doorway of salvation. And thank God that the doorway of salvation, it leads to the throne of grace. It gets you right into the throne room. A doorway is an entrance and it's an exit to all that come by way of it. Amen. You see, if I walk through that doorway this morning, I'm entering the foyer, but I'm exiting the sanctuary. On one side, it represents an entrance. On the other side, it represents an exit. Revelation 4 and verse 1, John said, Behold, he said a door was opened in heaven. And the voice that spake out, he said, was that of a trumpet. He said, Come up hither, and I'll show you things that must be hereafter. When John went through that doorway, on this side he left one side. He exited this world. But thank God he entered another world. I'm telling you on Wednesday about 7.30, somewhere around 7.30, uh, Brother Paul Lyons, uh, he went through that portal, that doorway. He exited this world, but thank God he entered another world. Uh, I'm telling you, he went through that door. You know why? Because a long time ago, uh, he went through that same doorway, uh, that sub salvation. Uh, he knew Christ. Uh, he knew God and the free pardon of sin. Uh, and thank God when it came to die, he left this world. Uh, he exited this way, and he entered into another land. Uh, he exited a world of turmoil and trouble, a world of problems, a world of frustrations. But thank God he entered a land of rest. He entered a land that's fairer than day. He exited a world of suffering. And thank God he entered a world of splendor. He, let my friend, exited a world of grief. But he entered a world of glory. Hallelujah. He exited a world of storms and shadows and struggles. But he entered a world, thank God, of sunshine. Thank God, I'm telling you, there is a better day coming. Coming, and my friend, you and I, one day, we'll all go through that doorway. Hallelujah. And Jesus tells us that this door leads to some things. And it's him this morning. Jesus is the door of salvation. Look at three things he gives and we'll be through. Number one, I would say this morning that this doorway gives us protection. He said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, notice this phrase, he shall be saved. Thank God this morning if, you're sa- if you've been through that doorway, you know what it is to be saved this morning. You might say, preacher, saved from what? Saved from sin. Saved from self. Saved from society. Saved from Satan this morning. Saved from heartaches. Same, saved from home breaks. Saved from hurt. Saved from hell this morning. I'm telling you, saved. It doesn't it feel good to know that you're saved today. And if you don't know that you're saved, thank God you can know that you're saved. You got to trust the door. Amen. You can't trust yourself. You can't trust what you've done or where you are or who you are this morning. But you can trust Jesus Christ this morning. I know that I'm saved because I'm trusting that doorway, and that doorway gives us protection. I'm not saved on based on how I feel. I'm not saved based on what I did the day I went to the altar. I'm not saved, my friend, based on what others say this morning. I'm saved this morning based off what the Bible says. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, the Bible says, shall be saved. Amen. I'm telling you, listen, I called upon the name of the Lord the best way that I knew how. I may have not said what you said, and you may have not said what I said, but the best way I knew how. I called on the name of Jesus Christ. I I didn't even say the name Jesus Christ when I got saved. But I believed Jesus Christ was my Savior. I believed he was the only way that I could get to heaven. Thank God. And my friend this morning, there is a deep settled peace that I know that I'm saved. Paul said this, I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. 
Thank God I'm not keeping myself saved. Y'all still with me? I'm not trying to be saved. I'm not hoping that I'm saved. I'm not, I'm not working to be saved. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, when I first got saved, I liked that old song uh, that said, If anyone makes it, Lord, surely I will. I loved that old song when I first heard it. And then I liked that old song, I'm building a bridge across the great divide. I'm building it strong and I'm building it wide. I love that song. I mean, I, I'd hear, I'd listen, I'd hear, so, uh, there was one group I used to listen to. I won't tell you who they are, uh, but I used to listen to them. I said, man, they can sing that song. And one day my preacher said, you know that's not scriptural, don't you? I said, don't tell me that because I like the tune. He said, boy, you ain't building nothing. He said, and if you did, he said, don't you know it'd collapse? You're not building no bridge. Then one day I heard a preacher preaching. He said, he blew that song out. If anyone makes it, I said, oh, don't blow that song out. He said, if anyone makes it, Lord, surely I will. He said, you better be going on a surely on something better than a surely I will. You better have a blessed assurance on the inside. I said, well, I'll call them songs. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, I don't have a hope so, think so, maybe so, probably so. But you can have a no so salvation because we're not keeping ourselves but our protection is not in what we did. It's in what he did. You need to quit trying to worry and figure out, did I do this right? Did I do that right? Can I tell you what needed to be done right? It was done right 2,000 years ago and nothing else has to be done. You just have to receive it and believe it and trust it. Hallelujah. Well, the devil will tell you, well, how do you know you didn't, uh, you didn't say the right thing? How does he know? He ain't saved. You need to quit listening to that book. Well, what if you didn't do everything right? You haven't never done anything right. Neither have I. I can go ahead and tell you the day you went to the altar. If it's left up to me and you, just go ahead and chalk it up. You didn't do it all right. But thank God Jesus knew a long time ago we couldn't do nothing right. So he did it all right at Calvary. Amen. And he said if you'll just come and if you'll just believe. I'm telling you a seven year old don't have the intellect that a 17 year old has. But if he comes and he believes the best way that he knows how. God's already done it all. And thank God there's protection for him just like somebody else. Oh, Brother Oliver B. Green said the devil bothered him for months after he got saved because when he got saved, he didn't call on Jesus. He said, God save me. He said the devil wrote him hard for months and said, you didn't get saved, Oliver, because you didn't call on Jesus. And you've heard them preachers say that if you're going to if you're gonna be saved, you've got to call on Jesus and ask him to save you. He said he tried to get saved again and again, but he said every time he'd bow his head to pray, he felt so foolish and felt like nothing was there. He said one day, he said, God, I don't even know if I'm saved or not. He said because I didn't call on Jesus Christ the day I got saved. He said the Holy Ghost spoke back to him and said, Oliver, you can't dissect the Trinity, amen when you called on God I'm going to tell you what happens to a lot of people when they start out of that pew and make their way to the altar, if they come with a broken and contrite spirit uh, listen, there's a whole lot of them got in before they ever got down here and said anything amen, you know why? Because they came believing, hallelujah, I'm not telling you don't have to pray, but what I'm telling you is it's not based on what we did, it's based on what he's done hallelujah you got to get past yourself to be secure. He gives them protection. That's what this door does. He gives protection. That has to do with our forever. And then I would say this morning, Jesus, the door of salvation, not only gives us protection, but thank God it gives us privileges. Look what he said in this verse. And shall go in and out. And shall go in and out. That protection has to do with our forever. That privilege, those privileges has to do with our freedom. You see, when God saves us, listen, He didn't save us to bind us. He saved us to bless us. Amen. He didn't save us to make slaves out of us. Thank God he made saints out of us. Amen. He didn't save us to ruin us. He saved us to redeem us. Amen. I'm telling you, he didn't save us to make us miserable. But thank God he saved us to manifest the grace of God. And can I tell you this morning, I'm glad that I've got freedom and liberty in Jesus Christ. Brother, I'm not shackled by sin anymore. You say, Brother Grabley, do you still sin? Sure I do. But I'm not a slave to it no more. 
I don't have to be a slave to see it. I can say no because there's someone living on the inside and he changes the want to. He puts something in you that makes you not want to live for this world. That makes you not want to live for the lust of the flesh and for the devil. But he puts a desire on the inside that lets you go in and out. There's freedom in Christ this morning. The greatest freedom you'll ever know is in Jesus. There's no freedom in drugs. There's no freedom in booze this morning. There's bondage in all that. Just take a good look at people that are living their life that way, young people. Do they look free? Spending every minute and every moment and every dime and dollar that they got to buy their next fix. That doesn't look like freedom to me. I'm telling you, think about uh, living in sinful pleasures and wickedness. Uh, I'm telling you, listen, having all kinds of sick diseases uh, uh, because you've went out there and, and lived like dogs and laid with the dogs. That doesn't look like freedom, amen. Uh, uh, when you've got to take shots and you've got to take pills uh, uh, because of something that happened that you can't even remember and somebody left you in a one night stand. That's not freedom at all. Amen. That's just bondage. Amen. I'll tell you what real freedom is. It's being able to have a pure conscience. It's being able to lay your head down at night. You say, well, I didn't live that way, but God saved me. Yeah, but you got a pure conscience. You can forget those things which are behind, and you can pillow your head at night knowing it's under the blood. Amen. And if you've never been out there, then you can pillow your head at night and know that, thank God, God saved you from some things. He saved you out of some things. I'm saying this morning uh, he gives us the privilege to come and to go and to enjoy the life that we have. How many of you this morning can raise your hand and truthfully say you enjoy life? It's about 50%. That's more than I thought we'd get in a Baptist church. I'm telling you, isn't it good to be saved? I'm telling you, isn't it good to, to get up on a Sunday morning and go to church? Oh, we got up this morning and was getting ready. And thank God the power went out. Isn't that a blessing? I looked at my wife. I said, boy, it's a real blessing this morning, isn't it? I'm not even going to get mad about it. Just thank God it went out. You say, why? Because it don't do no good to get upset. But I'll tell you this morning, you, gotta, you know, when you look at life and you think about all that God, I got up this morning. Hey, I didn't get up with a hangover. I didn't get up with a life of regrets. I got up with the same person I laid down with last night. I'm talking about if, you, if you're living your life that way, you ought to thank God for that. I'm in my right mind this morning. I don't have much of one, but thank God it's as right as it's ever going to be. Amen. I'm just telling you, isn't it good to be in your, your right mind today? Isn't it good to, to know that you don't have to go around looking over your shoulder all the time uh, uh, waiting for your past to catch up with you because it's under the blood. Uh, it's been washed away. It's been forgiven this morning. Uh, I'm telling you, you can come and you can go and you can serve God. That's a privilege this morning uh, to have a family, to have a good church to go to. That's why every time we go to church, we ought to say amen. Every time we go to church, we ought to give a good hand wave toward heaven. Every time we go to church we ought to not look at our watch uh, and we ought to think about the goodness of God. Uh, hey thanksgiving is a lifestyle for the child of God because we're reminded every day that he daily loadeth us with benefits uh, he's been better to us than what we deserve he's done far more than what we ever expected. Uh, I'm telling you we're privileged we're blessed individuals today and are set in the house of God in our right mind uh, hey we're not behind bars this morning uh, and we're not laying in a ditch somewhere. Uh, we can go in and out and we can love God and worship God, that's a privilege this morning. And you know why it's that way in your life and mine? Because if you're saved, you've been through that door. If you don't believe that this morning, think about this thought. Where would you be today? What would you be doing right now if you hadn't went through that door? There's no telling where the majority of us would be at today. He gives us protection. He gives us privilege. And then finally, He gives us pasture. That protection has to do with our forever. That privilege has to do with our freedom. But that pasture has to do with our fullness. He findeth pasture. You see, in Bible days, the shepherd was the door. Because that's how the sheep entered and left from pasture to pasture. It was by the hand of the shepherd, the guidance of the shepherd, he knew where the luscious fields were. He knew where to lead them. He knew where to guide them. As we sing the old song, God leads his dear children alone. 
The psalmist said in Psalms 23, He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth us. I'm so glad that this morning that the door of salvation gives us protection, privileges, but pastures. Those pastures are green pastures. They're guided pastures. They're gracious pastures. They're glorious pastures. You think about this morning in your life. You think about where God has led you. Most of us would not even be sitting here this morning had it not been for the hand of the shepherd. I'm telling you the reason I'm at Bible Baptist Church and the reason most of us are at Bible Baptist Church is because God led you here. I don't ever pick this place, and that's not anything negative about this place. But I don't ever pick to be here. You don't ever pick to be here. We didn't have it in our plans. It, it wasn't. It wasn't on our bucket list growing up uh, that we're going to move to this area. We're going. You say, well, I was born here. It wasn't in your plans to be here, but God put you here. You say, Well, I was born here, and I didn't have a choice. No, but God put somebody here. He led you here. You didn't get here by by mapping it out yourself. Remember, I called Brother Black when you was. Y'all wasn't, uh, he was looking for a church. We knew each other prior to them coming here. I called him one day. I said, hey, I heard you were, you're looking for a church. And I said, I happen to know a good one. <laughs> and he talked to me and I said, well, come. I said, why don't you come over and visit with us? And I remember Brother Lance Carpenter was here with us on that Sunday. I said, you know Brother Lance? I said, come over that Sunday. And when I hung the phone up, no lady, she said, well, how did it go? I said, well, he's coming, but they ain't going to stay. She said, how do you know that? I said, I can tell in his voice. Isn't it amazing how we can figure stuff out? And you know, he has stayed so good, I've tried to run him off. <laughs> Purposely. I'm telling you, I mean, he, he's like country music. He ain't going nowhere, like it or not. He's here to stay. And I'm thinking, but, but you know what? God led you here, didn't he? Haven't we been blessed? Oh, I look around this church this morning and I see person after person, face after face. God brought you here. You know, if God leads me someplace, he's going to have to tell me before I ever leave. It's got to be as real as it was the coming, the going. It's got to be as real as the coming. And that's how God works in our life. He leads us into the right pastures. If, if it was left up to us, oh, we map our life out. But God has to intervene because if we go by our plans, if everything goes the way we figured it, it would be a disaster. You say, well, I got plans. Nothing wrong with that. But when God changes it, just know the shepherd knows the way better than we do. He sees the next hilltop. He knows what's around the corner. He knows what we're facing in life, and he knows the turn of events in life. And I am so thankful this morning that I went through a door that don't just end in a room. Thank God through that door I found a friend. And that friend has guided me as the old songwriters, they sung it the other day. The unseen hand guides us through this weary land. This morning as we stand, Jesus, the door. He is the door this morning. Friend, have you been through that door? Do you know Christ and the free pardon of sin? Do you know him this morning? Have you experienced salvation? Is it personal to you? Is it real to you this morning? I would say this morning, if you're not saved, why don't you come? Why don't you come this morning and accept Christ? And if you're here this morning, you say, Brother Gravely, I'm saved. I've been through that door. But maybe you're seeking his will. You're seeking his answer. Then why don't you come this morning? Let him guide you. I'm going to tell you, God's got a pastor for every sheep. He's got a place. And he'll lead you. He'll guide you where you need to go. If you'll just be patient, you'll trust him. Wait. Wait on God. Don't get in a hurry as we sing this morning. You mind God. In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet. He'll always lead you God lead in the right direction. His dear children along. Will you follow him this morning? Where the water's cool flow bathes yes. the weary one's feet. Will you follow God Christ? Lead his dear children. Say, preacher, I want to be saved. Will you follow him this morning? Will you come to him? Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives song in the night season and all the 
Oh, why don't we sing another verse? Come on this morning. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley, the darkest of night, God leads his dear children. Man, let's sing it, church. Let's sing it to him. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow. Let's sing one more verse this morning. If you need to come, would you come this morning? Oh, sorrows befall us, and Satan opposed. God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children along. Oh, that's right. That's right. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. Amen, all God's people said. Amen. Amen. You know, I don't always know the path, but I always know the way. Amen, that's Christ. Follow Him. Amen, I praise the Lord for His goodness. Had it been good to be in God's house. Good crowd this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget play practice this afternoon at 4.15 and then at 5.15 for those who are younger. And so remember that. Also, if you look in the church bulletin, uh, one of the local nursing homes have asked uh, for two or three specific items that if we could help them by uh, uh, donating them. And so you can, uh, if you would like to pick something up to help, they have 75 residents. And so if you can, I think it's a blanket, some lotion, and maybe something else, but it's in the church bulletin. If you could uh, help by no, uh, picking something up, or if you would just like to give $5 at the welcome desk, then we'll, uh, we'll pick it up, whichever is easy for you, if you feel led to do that. Just an opportunity. We've been trying to get in that nursing home and hold services, so we feel like being a help to them may be a good way to uh, let us be able to get in and have services there. So it'll be an opportunity for you. All right, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock, or eating in service. And let's pray for the service and pray for God's will to be done. Brother Dole Rattery, would you dismiss us in prayer, brother?